have media that are abused in this room. <laughs> we good, Cliff? All right. Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome back to Reynolds Coliseum. Today we have the student athletes from North Carolina State. Uh, I'd like to remind everybody, make sure your phones are on mute. There is no flash photography, no videoing. Uh, I'd also like to remind you that when the student athletes are here, the locker room is open downstairs. All right, so at this time, we'll go ahead and open it up for questions. Uh, Wait, if you go away from the microphone. <coughs> Jordan Kramer, CBS 17. Mimi, obviously you started your college career at Tennessee. Is it a little, a little bit full circle to be playing them now with a Sweet 16 appearance on the line? Um, I think it's kind of – I wasn't expecting it. Like You never expect when you leave a school to um, come back. But um, I'm just very blessed and very grateful. Um, I think this goes to show the growth that I've um, become as a, a woman, um, just being an adult. Um, and seeing the adversity that I went through. So just seeing this growth in full circle and just being able to play my old team, um, I think it's just a blessing, and I'm very excited to play them. Okay, let's go to Ethan. Hey, Ethan McDowell from the Wolfpacker. Zoe, I think you're four games now into your postseason career. What have you learned about yourself as a player, about postseason basketball over the past uh, couple weeks here? I'm very competitive. I love to win. Um, obviously, these last four games have been very big and important, and I think just moving forward, I just got to remember that it's when I go home. All right, let's go to Ernie over here. Ernie Wolfpack Sports Radio. Uh, Mimi, uh, how do you um, how do you look at this season so far for you personally? Um, what, what 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 would be the the cherry on the the cake, your senior year, this is your last go around. What, what would make this year in this second half of the, this third season, what would it be enjoyable for you? What would that, what would when going to a Final Four or getting to a Sweet 16, what would that mean for you this year? Um, I think it would mean everything, but I think for me, I mean, I, I know that's every athlete's dream. Every athlete's dream is to win a national championship, make it to the Final Four. I mean, that is my dream as well, but Right now, I'm just, this is my last rodeo, so I just want to soak in everything. Um, I think I'm cherishing more my teammates as my sisters more than anything. Because, you know, as an adult, you know, you don't get that back. I mean, you get to come to alumni and see your um, old college teammates, but I just want to cherish this as much as I can. But, of course, I, we're going to compete as hard as we can, and we're going to try our hardest to win a Final Four and win a national championship. Okay, let's go over on the edge. Hey, Mimi, Brian Pertle with Pat Pride. Uh, sort of on that same vein, this will be your last game in Reynolds Coliseum. Sort of mm -hmm. how to manage the emotions going into that game, knowing there's it's the Sweet 16 appearance on the line, so a lot left to play for, but also kind of take it all in at the same time. It's one last, one last time on the court. Um, yeah, like you said, this is my one last rodeo here at Reynolds Coliseum. I think Wolfpack Nation has done a great job, as you probably saw with the post that we had today that were sold out. So just an understanding that Wolfpack Nation is showing out for us seniors and for the team. Um, but I just think, like questions before, it has come full circle for me. I'm, this is my last um, college game here at Reynolds Coliseum, but it's also I'm playing my freshman year team. So it's like it's just literally coming in full circle for me. But I just I'm very grateful. And I'm very blessed to be in this position. Let's go back up here, Jordan. <coughs> Just talking about the game itself for either player, Tennessee has some big physical players in the post. They've got guards that can shoot. I mean, they were the team that was probably closest to ending South Carolina's win streak. When you look at them, is there a team that you faced this season that you could maybe compare the Lady Vols to? Zoe, could you answer that, please? Dang, help me out here. I don't know. <laughs> um, Do you want me to help her out? Yeah, you could help her out. That <laughs> would be perfectly <laughs> fine. Um... I would say the – wow. Size-wise. Si are we going size-wise or are we going skill set? Everything. Oh, okay, okay. Um, skill skill set-wise, I would say UConn because that was our biggest test. Um, but for but for size, I would say Miami helped us out a lot because both of their bigs were in the 6'4 range. Um, not – no, 6'6 six, six range, how we're going to deal with TK um, and the rest of them. But I just think that – 
I think UConn was our best like overall game um, skill set comparison to the Lady Vols. But understanding that not only that they're versatile, we're versatile too. And we also have sides as well. So I think this is a great game, a matchup where from from the one all the way to the five, we match up perfectly. So I think this is going to be a great game to compete and see who um, is going to be the best at defending and rebounding. Let's go for him. You're welcome. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Jaden Watson Fisher, News and Observer. Zoe, um, you've got – you're surrounded – by a team of a lot of veterans, what does it mean to get to play alongside uh, people like me, people like River on um, on their last trip uh, <laughs> in Reynolds? It's a great feeling. Obviously, the bit, most important thing is to have leaders around you, and they hold you accountable, and they help you keep your head up when things aren't going your way. So that's definitely something I'm going to miss next year is their leadership and just the love that they have. Okay, let's get Ethan, and we'll go to Ernie. And Mimi, you've been here for two years now, two mm -hmm. very different seasons. Yes. What would it mean to you to win this game and you know get the program back to the stage that it's accustomed to? Um, I think it would be huge because, um, like my other schools, I have been in the Sweet 16. I have like made it um, to that far, so understanding what it takes. Um, I've been on that younger stick where I have made it that far and understanding what it takes. But like now, being a vet, it's like the mind has shifted. But um, it's just, I think it would be a great honor to bring it back, to be that team that brought brung it back for us. But I think it's, we're more than capable of doing it as a team, so I, I don't see why not. Okay, let's go to Ernie. Uh, so this question is for you. Um, last year you were in high school, and um, you, know, you decided to come to NC State. Uh, were you, did you ever think, that you would find yourself in this situation, um, about to possibly go to a Sweet 16 uh, in the NCAA tournament and being an integral part of that run? Yes, that's a big reason why I chose NC State because they always play at a high level. They always go far in tournaments. They win. And like I said, I'm very competitive, and that's very important to me. So I could definitely see myself in this position when I was in high school. Any other questions for the student athletes? All right, ladies, thank you very much. We appreciate thank your you. time. Good luck tomorrow. Thank you.
Welcome back, everyone. It's time now for Coach Wes Moore's portion of the press conference. We'll go ahead and open up the floor for questions. If you have a question, please raise your hand and wait for the microphone. Any questions for Coach? Cora? Cora Hall, the Maxwell News Sentinel. Um, I know you've talked a lot, a lot about the Harpers already, but just Kelly started on her staff when she was only a couple years out of college, starting her coaching career. Just like, what has it been like for you to see her go on to have the you know career she has and how she's grown as a coach just from when you had her on her staff? Yeah, it was pretty neat. Uh, I guess maybe when I hired her the first summer, uh, she was 24 years old. A lot of car rental places require you to be 25. So there was a lot of times where I drove and she navigated and she said we were great. This was before the phone GPS stuff, y'all. And you're flying from gym to gym to see AAU games and we would just about have passed the road and she'd go, oh, so let's turn right there. And I would just whip it and turn right. And she said, we're made for each other in this deal. So no, it's, it's awesome to see, you know, it, it's worked out great. She's back where, you know, she belongs, so to speak. Uh, had a great career, three national championships as a player. Uh, so it's neat that she's back home and, and uh, you know, again, doing so well. So, yeah, it's pretty, uh, pretty fun to watch. Let's go in the back first, and then we'll move up to Ernie. Uh, Coach, at half yesterday, there was a change of one of the officials. Um, when were you notified of that, and were you given any reasoning why and there, why they didn't use the standby? Yeah, and I, and I feel bad. I mean, I've known the official. I, rec I recruited her. You know, that's, that's a tough thing about being old. Uh, you know, uh, Tommy, someone from – she's from Chattanooga. I recruited her, uh, you know, devil led her away. She went to Furman, you know. I don't know. Uh, but uh, anyway – um, you know, I, I said, I, <laughs> you know, on the sideline sometimes, I did say something about how in the world are you doing this game? I hope that had nothing to do with it because, again, I was just, you know, bantering back and forth. But, uh, yeah, I mean, again, I, I would never doubt her integrity and those sort of things. Uh, but, you know, I guess when they found out she had a degree from Chattanooga, I guess that – maybe made it a little bit stickier, but I'll be honest, I didn't know they were doing anything until I see Angelica suffering over there stretching, so, uh, and someone told me. So, again, I, I kind of hate it that it happened, um, because again, I, you know, would never question Tommy's, uh, Tommy Paris's integrity or whatever. All right, Ernie, do you have a question? Well, Fact Sports Radio, uh, Coach, you've been in the game for 34 years and longer than that. Maybe, uh, maybe, maybe longer yeah, than but, that. But let's keep it at that. That's yeah, good. keep it at that. Yeah. Right, all right. Yeah, we'll uh, go with it. Hey, coaching uh, for 34 years. 35. But 35. We'll go yeah. with it. Okay, I'll go with it. <laughs> A lot of experience. You've seen it all. You know, in this game, recruiting, everything. Uh, what has eluded you is the the, the Final Four. Uh, is that something that you aspire to get to as a coach? I know it sounds like a stupid question, but, I mean, I know you're trying to yeah. get this next game. Yeah, I mean, I'm still game. haunted, you know. Yeah. Uh, you know, how many, two, three years ago were, uh, you know, playing Connecticut in Connecticut to go to the Final Four, and uh, we lose in double overtime. So that will forever haunt me. You know, I look back on what I could have done at the end of regulation differently, you know, and – things like that. So, uh, sure. I mean, that's, uh, I think that's everyone's goal. And if you ever, uh, lose sight of that and it's not, uh, a motivating factor, then, uh, it's probably time to play golf full time. Mm -hmm. Other questions, Bob? With the associate press, did you know Mari Key, I assume, uh, like in the high school? Sure. Yeah. Yeah, we, we obviously tried to recruit her. Uh, I don't know, you know, how deep we got into it with her. But, uh, yeah, I mean, she is an unbelievable presence um, on both ends of the floor and, um, you know, a big challenge uh, when you're trying to have an interior scoring game, things like that. Uh, she definitely, like I said, impacts the game on both ends. So, um, 
but yeah, we recruited her, but you know, I don't think we ever had, I don't think she ever came on an official visit. I don't believe. Let's go back over here. Coach, I know we've talked a lot about Tennessee and the Harpers, but on the court, what are you feeling towards Tennessee? I know you said you scrimmaged them this year. What are the things you know you're telling your team they need to really what think are the about? Things, what? what are the things that you're telling your team they need to really think about for the matchup tomorrow? Uh, yeah, I mean, uh, you know, it's going to take uh, – <laughs> we're going to play – have to play with a, a lot of urgency, a lot of energy. Uh, you know, they've got talent, um, you know, great talent. And obviously they're well coached, well prepared. Uh, you know, I think the biggest things when I think of Tennessee is transition. You, you know, you better do a good job in transition D. Uh, not only take away the, the block and the paint, but then they've got, you know, some great shooters spotting up when they run as well. And then offensive rebounding. Again, uh, I was around Pat Summit a lot. Uh, and I've heard her say it a million times, and I've probably said it at least a million myself. Uh, offense sells tickets, defense wins games, reboundings wins championships. And, uh, you know, I haven't necessarily got that message through to my team as well as I would like. Uh, I do think this time of year, uh, rebounding is, is going to determine a lot of these games. Uh, if you give people second looks and you yourself are one and done, uh, it's going to be tough to overcome. Let's go in the back to Jordan. Hey, Coach. Jordan Kramer, CBS 17. I apologize if you've been asked this already, but Mimi Collins said it's kind of a full circle moment for her playing Tennessee, given the fact that she started her career there. Mm -hmm. She talked a little bit about some of the adversity that she kind of went through for her career. It's kind of bringing some of that up. Have you talked to her at all about maybe compartmentalizing that the emotional side and, and just focusing on the game? Not a whole lot. You know, uh, you know, again, nowadays it's very common for uh, players to face their former school. So, uh, you know, not really. I mean, again, uh, you know, obviously Mimi is an important part of what we do. And there was a coaching change at Tennessee, and and that w that influenced, you know, uh, her decision some. And she went back home to Maryland at the time. And so, uh, you know, I don't think it was any, like, you know, conflict or anything like that. It was just they made a coaching change, and so she decided to go go home to Maryland. So, uh, you know, knowing me, if I do say anything, it'll be uh, joking, sarcasm, something to that effect. All right, let's go back to Ethan. <clears throat> hey, Coach Ethan from the Wolf Packer. Uh, this might be a silly question, but well, um, I've already had a couple of those, so <laughs> go ahead. <laughs> Madison and Rakia obviously were teammates earlier in their college career. Uh, when you have players that have, you know, played together or played against each other extensively at former schools, like, are, are you asking Madison, like, hey, like, what would you do against Rakia? No, but maybe I should. <laughs> yeah, that's probably a good idea. But, yeah, I mean, again, there again, you watch all this film. I mean, uh, you know, so you kind of get a good feel. But, uh uh, yeah, I mean, I think it's pretty obvious. I mean, I think she's projected to be top two or three in the WNBA draft, so uh, you kind of know what you're getting there. Okay, let's go back to Coral. Kind of going to go on that same trend, just how tough is it to game plan for a player like Kia Jackson, who, especially the way she's playing right now, kind of caught fire at the end of the season? Yeah, she's playing extremely well right now, and a tough matchup. You know, do you put size, do you put length on her? Do you put quickness on her? And of course, Kelly, she's a great coach. If you put, you know, quickness on her, she's gonna take them inside and post them up. And if you uh, go with length, she's gonna step out and t shoot the three or take them off the bounce. Uh, you know, and then you, in a perfect world, you'd be able to really help uh, off people and get in the gaps and things like that. But oh, they got you know three or four people out there shooting the three extremely well. So. Uh, pick your poison. If you help on her, then uh, you're giving something else up. So uh, definitely it's a tough matchup. I mean, again, they, they got a lot of All-Americans over there. So, uh, but, uh, you know, again, at this time of year, you're going to play somebody really good. And it's gotten to a point now that when you, you know, you get into this second tier, it's, uh, <laughs> there's no easy ones. But Tennessee's definitely well, uh, 
well stocked. Yeah. Any other questions for Coach? Uh, go back to Jordan. Uh, Mimi and River both talked about kind of the emotion of tomorrow's game, it being their final game here at Reynolds Coliseum, no matter what. Can you just talk about the pair of them and really what they have meant to this program? Uh, yeah, I mean, again, uh, trying to figure out how we can get another year out of them, you know. Uh, I don't know. I think River would look good with blonde hair and, you know, we can maybe disguise them a little. But, yeah, I mean, again, um, they're both invaluable. I mean, Mimi's uh, shooting the three a lot better. You know, she's worked extremely hard in that regard uh, and, and made herself a threat at, at several levels, and that's good. And, and uh, you know, Mimi, again, someone you can play at the four, you can play her at the five some, so great versatility. Uh, River Baldwin, you know, uh, I think uh, when we just this year said, hey, you're it, we're going to play through you, I think that gave her great confidence. and. And she was able to step up and and do some amazing things. So, yeah, you know, I'm sitting here uh, one eye on this game and then another eye, you know, uh, you know what are we going to do about filling those spots? But, uh, yeah, both of them have been, been a joy to be around. You know, uh, I love uh, cutting up with both of them. And, uh, again, they're going to be missed on the court and off. Any other questions? Oh, back over here. Coach, when you play against SEC teams like you're going to tomorrow, what are the immediate characteristics you think of in the SEC, and what's distinctive about SEC defense? Well, I don't know that I single out SEC. I mean, I look at it as power fives. I mean, again, um, you know, and a lot of them are probably like Tennessee. They're going to play great defense. They're going to run and transition. They're going to be big time on the offensive boards. So, you know, um, you know, again, I've said this a million times too. It's a butt game. You better get your butt back. You better get your butt between them and the rim, and you better get your butt on them and box them out. So, um, yeah. Back to Ernie. Dang, Ernie. <laughs> you got three minutes. <laughs> Practice to watch the start. Uh, what did you love most about this group of this team that you're coaching this year? I mean, you, you know, you. Well, I think more than anything else, uh, you know, uh, they get along, you know, and they enjoy being around each other and makes uh, – I don't think there's a whole lot of jealousy. I think they're happy, genuinely happy for someone else when they do well and they celebrate other people's success instead of just their own. Um, you know, I think, uh, again, that just uh, makes it more pleasant for everybody when, uh, when team – is close and have great chemistry and and those sort of things and uh, so yeah it's been it's been a fun ride and I'd like to keep it going. He's got two more minutes if anybody has a question. <laughs> <laughs> All right, coach. Thank, thank you very you. much. Good luck tomorrow. I'm trying to show a few film clips before we go on the court. <laughs>
All right, we are now ready to start the Tennessee portion of the press conference, and we'll begin with the student athletes. Uh, I'd like to remind you to make sure your phones are on mute. If you have a question, please raise your hand. Chapman will get you the microphone, and we can ask then. So who has a question for the student athletes? Let's go ahead and start here, and then we'll go there. Uh, Lindsay Gibbs with Power Plays. Uh, Tamari, how has it been to be back uh, home, I guess? <laughs> and um, especially after all you've been through, to be able to um, play in the second round in front mm -hmm. of, uh, with your team and in front of your hometown fans. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I think it's, it's definitely full circle for me. Uh, like you said, to be able to come home, um, play in front of people that I haven't seen in a while, that haven't been able to get out to Knoxville to see me play, um, teachers, trainers, you know, my mom's side of the family, everybody had came in and uh, rallied behind us for us to push through to get to the second round. All right, let's go to Jaden on the edge there. Jaden Watson Fisher, News and Observer. Uh, Tamari, obviously your sister uh, plays for Carolina and she's down um, in Columbia. Um, have you like been privy to some of the like family texts in terms of figuring out logistics mm -hmm. to get everyone where they need to be to see both of y'all? Um, yeah. So when I went home in the um, in the summer, my mom had an Excel spreadsheet of <laughs> <laughs> all the games. Um, once both of our schedules came out, where she was gonna go, uh, hotels and the whole nine. So I think she's been to like forty three games this season between the two of us and counting um so yeah i know sh uh, she gets really excited about that um her being able to work remote lets her travel all over to come watch us play and, and that means a lot for the both of us okay other questions for the student athletes Thanks. let's go to <laughs> ethan and then we'll get her hey ethan mcdowell from the wolf packer this is for either player what's your favorite part about playing with rakia jasmine could you answer that please um i would just say that her being a competitor is really the best thing about Kia. She works extremely hard. She has a really great work ethic. Um, and she wants to win every single possession. Um, and playing with somebody like that, you never have to worry if they're going to go hard. You never have to worry about, you know, are, do they want to win? You never have to worry about any of that. So I think that's the best thing about Kia. Okay, let's go over here to Ernie. Uh, Wolfpack Sports uh, Radio. Uh, Jasmine, you, you're the point guard in this game tomorrow. Um, what's your biggest concern as the, you know, you, you handle the ball the majority of the time uh, for your team? What, what is your biggest concern going into tomorrow's game? Um, tempo, uh, uh, you know, turnovers, uh, expound on that if you can. Um, well, one thing we know about NC State is that they play really good defense. You know, they want to kind of um, keep you out the paint. Um, that's where we like to play, is in the paint. So um, I wouldn't say that's a concern for me. I think we really have a good game plan going in, um, and we're really going to be locked in and focused. So I wouldn't say it's a big concern, but I do, not, I do know that's how they like to play, um, and that's one of our strengths for us. OK, let's go to Bob. Bob Sutton with the Associated Press. Tamari, how rewarding has it been for you to get a full season in, and were you ever concerned that maybe your career was over last season? Um, I think it was scary at the time, um, you know, just kind of the unknown of, you know, what my next steps were once I got diagnosed. But uh, just knowing I had a good crew with us, you know, my teammates were really supportive. Our our doctors and my strength coaches, um, my coaches have been supportive through all of that. Uh, so they just knew um, once I could uh, get back on the court and start playing again, they had a game plan for me um, and a timeline for me. So we just kind of, you know, took it one day at a time. Let's go up here to Lindsay. Tamari, so many people find so much inspiration in your story. Um, and what have you learned about yourself through this journey? <laughs> um, that I'm not patient, I think. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, it, it was hard sitting out, um, patiently waiting to be able to get cleared and play again. Um, but it was also hard trying to get back into the swing of things as well. Obviously, I would choose this hard a million times over again. Uh, but I think both processes uh, taught me patience, you know, taking it one day at a time, one practice at a time. I wasn't going to get it all back um, in a day or two or a game or two. So I think that's the biggest thing. All right, let's go back to Ernie. 
Carrie High School, um, Tamara, this is for you. How did you make it out of Raleigh? I mean, <laughs> I'm just wondering. I, I, I live not too far from Cary High School. Mm -hmm. So, um, and you, you're right here in ACC country. So, how, how, how did they recruit you? Did mm -hmm. you just want to leave, you know, state of North Carolina? Or what was the situation with that? Oh, uh, yeah, I played. Um I played EYBO, so I think getting in the circuit where they put me in front of a lot of different uh, colleges and universities all over the country, I think that helped um, me get out of it, get out uh, more. Also, I think I just grew up coming to these games. I mean, probably came to the first one when I was in fourth or fifth grade mm -hmm. between um, UNC Duke and NC State. Um, so I think it just all came down to when I got older, kind of what I was looking for. I kind of could figure out myself a little bit more, what I wanted for myself in the future, and Tennessee aligned perfectly with that. Okay, let's go back to Lindsay. Okay. Uh, this is for both of you. There are a lot of new eyes on women's basketball right now. Things are really rising, but there's also a lot of wonderful history in the sport. Growing up, what are your, some of your favorite memories? You mentioned coming to these games here. Uh, do you have any specific players that you loved watching or specific memories? I don't know, maybe any volunteers also that you loved watching growing up? Jasmine, could you start, please? Um, honestly, uh, when you talk about um, other Vols or other Lady Vols that I like to watch, uh, when I was growing up and I finally started to get into basketball, I was always watching Megan Simmons. Um, I mean, her track record at Tennessee is amazing, being player of the year, I think, twice. Um, and she was a speedy guard, just like me. Um, and so looking at her, and back then they were wearing like huge jerseys. So <laughs> it looked like she was going way faster than she was. Um, but I always admired how fast she went and kind of like aligned my play with hers. And that's really where I kind of fell in love with the game of basketball is watching her and going to Final Fours. Tamara, can you add anything? Um, I think for me, more so, I just loved watching basketball. Um, and like you said, growing up in the ACC, I watched all the games, SEC, ACC, Big Ten. Um, I just liked watching good basketball. I think I don't really have any really specific players. Obviously, we have Candace and Tamika and Shamika, um, the GOATs. And, you know, when we get time, we go back and look at the amazing things that they did at Tennessee. But for me, I just was kind of all over the place. <laughs> Let's go to that edge over there. Ryan Sylvia, Rivals.com. Tamari, thinking back to when Jasmine transferred in, what were your initial impressions of what she'd bring to the team and what's it been like playing with her this year? Um, my first initial impression off the court was that she's hilarious. Um, she is one of the funniest people on the team. Uh, I think the whole visit, we were cracking jokes the whole time as soon as she stepped foot on campus. But um, also that she's a competitor. Um, she was really good at making reads on the offensive end. And um, you know that she's going to have your back on both ends of the court. Um, she's a good communicator, and um, she's one of the leaders on the court. Um, no matter the highs or the lows of the game, she stays poised and keeps everybody else poised as well. All right. Let's see if we can uh, get a Zoom question now from Maria Cornelius. Maria, you can go ahead. Jasmine, you've been at Tennessee <laughs> two years now, of course, and last year you got to play the second round on, on your home court, and now, of course, you're in Raleigh. I know capacity is 7,000, but everyone says it is very loud there, probably with the lower ceiling. Do you think it's helped Tennessee that you have played in some very hostile environments at South Carolina and in Greenville, which was essentially a South Carolina home game, going into this game? You're, I don't think this is a team that's going to be intimidated by noise. Yeah, I definitely think it helps um, <laughs> that we've played um, – in such environments um, that you kind of talked about. But um, even when we were at our, the game watching NC State play um, Chattanooga, it was extremely loud in there. I mean, um, the seats were full. I don't think you saw any empty seats. Um, but we're used to playing in that environment. Uh, and we in any environment that we play in, we lean on each other and, and the coaching staff. Um, we know no matter where we go, whether we're on our home court or not, we, we have each other. Um, and we play for each other. So I don't think that the fans or anything else is going to be an issue. All right. Do we have any other questions for the student athletes? Maria may have another question. Let's check and see. Maria, do you have a second question? Yes, please. Okay, go right ahead. This is for Tamari. Tamari, your mother is all over social media, TV, <laughs> newspapers, yeah. Mark's Madness Twitter account is now calling her the real MVP. Yeah. 
Is she becoming more famous than her children? And is she going to be a little bit unbearable here for a little while? A uh, perfect example of this. Yesterday after the game, I obviously had a lot of family here. So I was with them after the game and I kept calling my mom and she finally called me back and I'm like, where are you? Like, I'm waiting for you. She's like, oh, I'm sorry. I, I had an interview, um, but I'll be over there in a few minutes. And I, was, <laughs> I said, okay, yeah. So whenever you get a chance, you know, I'm here waiting for you. But, <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, I think um, it's, it's something that me and my sister, we, we grew up with her being at all of our games. So I think for her to get the recognition that she's getting on social media, I mean, in the interviews, the news articles, like she's through the moon with all of that. So, yeah. <laughs> all right. Any other questions? Okay. Thank you very much, ladies. We appreciate your time and good luck tomorrow. Thank, thank you. you. Uh, Coach Harper's interview session will start at 235. So.
All right, at this time, we're going to start uh, Coach Harper's portion of the press conference. We're just going to go ahead and open up the floor for questions. If you have a question, please raise your hand and wait till we get you the microphone. So, who has a question for Coach Harper? Let's go back to Lindsay. Lindsay Gibbs with Power Plays. Coach uh, Wes Moore was talking all about your relationship and how, <laughs> how far back you go and how much uh, your friendship means to him. Um, what is it like you to be facing him in such a big moment? Yeah, um, we've coached against each other before, but obviously not in the NCAA tournament. And um, it's uh, it's fun, but it's not <laughs> both. Um, you know, uh, we it's somebody that we pull for uh, when we're not playing them and somebody that I respect Um a lot and have appreciated his his friendship um, throughout the years. So I know, you know, when the ball when the ball goes up, you know, he's locked in on what he's doing. It's the same same for us. You know, we're locked in and um, going to do the best we can to get the win in advance. Let's go to Cora. Sorry, I'm going to keep asking about this, but um, <laughs> Wes was, he's been sharing a lot of stories about you guys. Um, oh, I'm so scared. <laughs> one of them was about how he got you to come to Chattanooga from Auburn. And I was just wondering if you could share your side of oh, the story funny. of how he got you to leave Auburn and go coach with him at Chattanooga. Wes is a really good recruiter. Um, he, he's always been a really good recruiter. And, um, you know, he... In that moment, I was I was thinking about my next steps, and he happens to call, and he's talking to me about his job. But obviously, he he knows that at this point, I'm um, yeah, I'm young, I'm very young, um, but I'm also married. And uh, we were talking through kind of what you know what he he saw for me at Chattanooga, and I'll never forget. He says, "So, what does your husband do?" And I said, "Well, um, he wants to coach." someday and um at that point he had gotten out of high school teaching and coaching he was um, working at a golf course and I told him that and then I think the next phone call he says well I, I might have another spot available and that was the first time that um John and I ever worked together was with uh, West. okay let's go over here to our left and then we'll go back there hey Kelly Luis Fernandez WRL um I, uh, I, to continue the West questions. It's fine. Um, <laughs> you know, I think Wes has this, this persona that he seems to have when he talks with media, when he kind of has the camera in front of him. He's very, he seems like this very fun, lovable type of person. Do you, is that who he truly is? Who, who is the West more that you know? Um, man, he's funny. Uh, most of the time, Wes is that person. Um, he is, he loves lunch. Um, he, um, no salad dressing, extra cheese on a salad, um, unsweet tea. Um, he's going to change his order 30 times. You hate it for the waitress. Um, Wes is um, uh, always complaining about something. Um, in a great way that only Wes can do. Uh, I'll tell you a, a great story of him. So I was, um, Wes also um, doesn't like to play, pay full price for a lot of things. And so when I first started working with him at Chattanooga, um, I was under 25. So you can't rent a car without extra fees under 25. And so... He was not going to let me rent a car to go recruiting. He rented the car, and I rode shotgun, which typically doesn't happen, right? For assistant coaches, you don't usually do that. But we were, we were in Orlando, and this was prior to GPS, you know, prior to cell phones, so you read maps. So I'm in the front seat reading the map. If you, is anybody in here ever ridden with Wes in the car? Okay, well, this you wouldn't understand. <laughs> and so... Um, it was perfect because I could read it and say, I think we've got to go here, and we were going to get off no matter how late that decision was made. Um, I thought it was a pretty good – we were a pretty good match from, from the first moment we worked together um, for a lot of reasons. But um, 
he he is fun to be around. He really is. Um, he's very competitive, and you know I think he takes a lot of things to heart, um, uh, especially when it comes to his teams. Okay, let's go in the back there. <clears throat> Coach, I got to tell you, he told the exact same story. So I'm glad. Oh, so it's real. Yeah. So yeah, I got it. Exactly. <laughs> um, you, you spoke about how Wes kind of gave you and, and John your first start together as coach. What is it like coaching with your husband? Um, and what are the upsides and some of the challenges? Um, man, we've done this so long. I haven't even answered that question in years. Um, I think, I think the, uh, some of the benefits. You know, I don't go home after a tough loss or even a tough practice and, you know, my, my spouse put his arm around me and say, okay, it's okay, honey. <laughs> it's not okay. He gets it. Um, so having somebody that really, truly understands what we're going through or what I'm going through each and every day, I think it's been beneficial. Um, for many years, uh, 14 to be exact, we coached together uh, or we, we were – I should say that we coached 12 years of the first 14 years of our marriage without children. And I think for us, the team was our family. And um, we, we really embraced that life. Um, and you could really pour into our team. We still do. Uh, but now we just have our own two with us. Um, that makes things challenging. When I'm busy, he's busy. Um, it makes it difficult to... Uh, to balance being parents and coaches that are coaching together. I think that's one of our biggest challenges, to be honest with you. Um, people think, you know, that we, we go home and we talk about it 24-7. We don't. Um, I think the benefit of having children, we go home, and it's all about them when we're at home. Um, but um, I, I think just the, re the understanding of, of what we're doing um, has been – beneficial to do it together let's go to core and then we'll come back um obviously <coughs> nc state has a really great post presence with R river baldwin but they have some really just good guards on the perimeter fast athletic great scores just how do you you know approach you know that kind of challenge with your team especially you know this team has grown a lot defensively but that wasn't always this team's strength yeah obviously uh, i think the balance that nc state has offensively with their personnel, with their actions. Um, you just have to be great in all areas defensively. Uh, they, they do such a good job of taking advantage of your mistakes, whether that's in the paint or on the perimeter. Um, I think they can spread the ball around and, and find opportunities for them um, to attack in different ways. So I, I think that's, that is a huge challenge, uh, you know, guarding the actions and, and you know, not making mistakes. Um, but, you know, hopefully we can go back and look at, at some of our games that we've played, some teams that maybe are similar in, in style, uh, maybe bits and pieces of each of the teams we've played to try to help give us confidence in what we're doing tomorrow. Let's go in the back. Coach, you know, um, can you speak to having Tamari back? You know, can you describe the mental fight she's had to, to be back in the court this last year and a half um, and where she's grown? Yeah, yeah. Um, well, first off, you know, everyone knows the, the physical challenge that Tamari had to get back out on the court. And, and obviously, um, last year when we got the diagnosis, we, we were just extremely concerned for our health. And, and once we were able to get past that and realize she was going to be okay, it, there was this unknown of, of what's going to happen. And she wanted to come back. She wanted to try it. But we also knew that we had to be patient with her. She had to be patient with herself. Um, we continued to tell people to be patient with her. And I, I knew that this was going to be a months-long process. And um, that's what you're seeing now. We knew that for her to get back to... Uh, where she needed to be to be able to help this team at an elite level, uh, it was just going to take a lot of time and a lot of reps and some ups and downs through it, through those months. And that's where we're at right now. And that, you, you know, it makes for a great story. You, you talk about all that and how we knew this was going to take time. But when you when you know that and you then put yourself in her shoes and you think about, having to deal with the emotions, not just of, of a diagnosis in that moment, but wanting to be somewhere and, and it 
taking so long to get there. Um, that's hard. And I'm so proud of her and her fight. And, and, you know, she just, she just came back every day. She never got too down when I know it was hard. And, um, just, just really happy that she's been rewarded with being able to play and being able to be effective on, on both ends of the court as, as this season has um, uh, progressed. So I'm just really proud of her and happy for her, really happy. Okay. We'll go Lindsay and then back there, and then we'll go Cor. Coach, there have been a lot of new eyes on women's basketball, but I think sometimes the history gets a little bit lost in the shuffle and a little disrespected. You had so many great moments in the NCAA tournament. I want to ask you two questions. What were your kind of standout moments for you when you were playing in this tournament? And also, what were your memories before you played growing up? Yeah, um, goodness, the, the, the standout moments. Um, I'm very blessed to have had a lot of opportunities in this tournament and um, obviously at the elite level and um, us winning three national championships. I, it's hard to pick one moment, but we'll go with the 39-0 and 0 season. Um, my junior year it was um, truly m remarkable for, for our team to cap that season, that perfect season with a national championship. So hard to do. Oh, my goodness, it is so hard to do. So hard to win and much less win and go undefeated in the entire season. So, um, you know, you look back to that. We it, we didn't know what, how hard it was at that in that moment. I mean, we, we couldn't really appreciate it until we didn't win the, the following year, which leads me to my second one was probably um, losing, actually, in the NCAA tournament for the first time. Uh, that was my senior year, Elite Eight. Um, I'm still not over it, but it's okay. I can talk about it now. <laughs> Um, it, it was tough, you know. The the you you remember sometimes those moments that that you hurt the the painful moments. Sometimes those are more vivid, um, and, and they're hard. Um, when I was growing up, um, I remember watching Pat Summit, and um, you know I remember um, remember her teams. And the year before I got to Tennessee. The loss to, to UConn, I believe, in the, the national championship game. So, um, and you know, there's so many so many great players, right? That that came through, and me growing up in the state of Tennessee, uh, those are the those are the players that, that I watched. Um, Nikki McRae was one that uh, you know I really, she was just fun to watch. She played so hard, and her arms like covered, you know the entire court, it felt like. She was such a great defensive player and, and a great athlete. Okay, I think I'll stay on the aisle there. Coach, you mentioned pulling from past games to prepare for NC State. How important do you feel is that number one strength of schedule, SEC gauntlet, y'all had to play through, especially right now in this time of year? Yeah, I, you know, we hope that that has helped prepare us. I think um, there have been numerous times late this season that we've, we've been in tough situations and we've shown a lot of poise um, that's what we want to draw from as well, not just the actions and not just how we need to play, but, but just the poise in those big games. Uh, and our, our, team, our team really um, has stayed pretty steady, um, kept emotions in check, and I think that's, that's a really good um, uh, strength to have going into a, a game like this. Okay, we're going to get Cora, and then i got to take a Zoom call, and that's all the time we have, I'm afraid. Um, Kanaya Boyd, early enrollee, just seems like a bundle of fun um, whenever he, we see her around the team. Just what has it been like to have her youthful presence around? I know a lot of players said she makes them feel a little bit old. Um, but how beneficial has that been to have someone who's just so young and excited to be around and navigate college? I'm telling you all, Kanaya Boyd has been great for our team. And I know right now there are a lot of people that don't, don't know who she is. Um, early enrollee is not playing this year, um, rehabbing an injury. Um, her, her personality has been very endearing to the entire team. Everybody, she's so young, everyone wants to take care of her um, a little bit, but I, I'm, she has really connected with everybody on the team. I think she has been huge, huge for um, the personality and the culture of our basketball team. Um, I, th I think she arrived on campus right when we needed her. Okay, we've got time for one more Zoom call. Maria Cornelius, do you have a question? 
Yes, Coach, one more West thing. He gave a little more flavor to the hiring of John. He said that sure he, he really wanted you, and he scrounged up a little bit of money to get John and told him all he had to do, and I get it now, was go to lunch with him every day. I wasn't sure what that meant. And he could play golf whenever he wanted. And then uh, Wes said he was stunned when John left him yeah. to follow you to West. This Carolina. is true. This is very true. Left. But on a more poignant note, and I knew this, but I never really thought about it. He noted that you have followed two legends, Kay Yow at NC State and then Pat Summit at Tennessee. And that is not, I mean, that is very hard to do. Obviously you knew both women, you played for Pat. He also said that Kelly is right where she needs to be right now. Just have, have you ever been able to, to sort of wrap your arms around the fact you've had to follow two legends at two different schools and all that entails? Yep. It's a lot. Um, it was a lot and, um, uh, it always will be. And that's, that's okay. I, I think, um, you know, uh, for for me, in in both of those situations, you you take those jobs with the understanding of what you're following. You understand the challenges. You understand the emotions, and you can't get in the middle of it when it's difficult and start complaining that you didn't know this was going to be this way. You know, right? There's there was a lot. There's a lot with with each um, situation, um, but. That's what I've, I've always tried to tell people. I, you know, I'm never going to step up here and try to be somebody I'm not. I'm never going to try to be somebody else. And um, the, the best I can do is be the best version of me, uh, regardless of uh, where that is. And, you know, I've, I've learned a lot from every place I've been, every coach I've worked with, every coach I've worked for. Um, every player I've coached, you know, all of those experiences. I mean, it's just it's what life is, right? It's. You, you just take all of that and you embrace it, you learn from it, and you, you move forward and try to be the best version of you um, the next day. And I think um, hopefully people that know me know that I love life. I enjoy what I do and um, very, very fortunate to be in the position I'm in. Okay, thank you very much, Coach. We've got to let you get to practice yeah. now. Uh, good luck tomorrow. All right, thank you, guys. Sorry I got a little windy.